everyone, how are you all? Hope you're well. I am sitting down to film this video today because I wish when I fell pregnant there was more like openness about the reality of pregnancy. Because you know, you see on social media, you see all the pretty things, you see all the pretty furniture and all the beautiful photos of women in their outfits and whatever. But I feel like the real side of it especially with mental health, mental illness, however you want to put it, it's kind of hidden in social media. This video is going to be a combination of how my pregnancy has been, how I felt through every trimester so far. Obviously, I've still got a little bit to go, but yeah, just kind of where I'm at, how I felt, how things have changed, how I knew, when, when we knew, when we found out, all of those things. Okay, so obviously, I'll start at the top <laughs> with the first trimester. Well, I'll start with how and when like we found out. Before we tested, there was kind of like, I don't know, I just had like this feeling and I was sleeping so much, like so, so much. I was so tired. Started getting car sick again all of a sudden. I used to get really badly car sick as a kid and we would go for like a 20 minute drive and I'd look at my phone for two minutes and I would feel so ill. Yeah, we just had this gut feeling and I, was I think five, four or five days before my period. So I hadn't even missed my period yet. And it was just in my head. And I was like, no, I have, I have to do a test. I have to test, I have to find out. If it's negative, it is what it is. You know, it wasn't meant to be. Well, you know, if, at least I can get it out of my mind. Obviously, if, if it showed, because it was still quite early. And it was funny actually, and I so wish we filmed it. It's just, we didn't think uh, it's hard to explain like I feel like I knew but in the back of my mind I didn't want to convince myself in case and almost like upset myself I, I said to my partner like no you look at it first and he looked at it and did this like Kind of face and I was like oh it's not is it like it's, it's okay And I grabbed his hand and flipped it over and I thought he was pulling my leg I thought he was joking with me and I was like you liar And I whacked him and he's like what and he looked at it again, but the way he was holding it his thumb was casting a shadow over the second line because it was so faint, but it was there. So we found out when I was literally like, I don't even think I was like four weeks along. So this journey has felt extra long for us because we felt found out so early. And at the time I just moved out of my own apartment in with a housemate. And then I think it was probably about two months after that, I moved in again with him. So. My life had changed a lot, you know, gone from living by myself to living with a housemate to now living with him and his family. So at the beginning and, you know, the after we found out in the first trimester, there was a lot of change. There was a lot, like a, a lot happening and I stopped um, working at the job I was at because it just wasn't it. It wasn't good for my mental health, wasn't safe for me anymore, like with the pregnancy. Pretty much, I think after the next week, just no more. So I didn't work for two months either. And I tried everything. I applied for so many jobs and I ended up getting a job where I am now, which my housemate actually got me doing food service and aged care. So that's kind of to top off <laughs> my journey, my personal journey into pregnancy, how we found out how things went. So that was difficult for my mental health, you know, with so much change because I don't do great with change. I don't do well. It was taken sometimes as also you're ungrateful for this new life and it was like no no not ungrateful it's not that I don't want it I just I'm still processing that life to here and being pregnant to what life's going to look like if that makes sense the morning sickness people often ask me well I should say that's the first question you get did you have morning sickness and for me no just being like dead open here. I used to vape a lot, like a lot, a lot before I fell pregnant. And the second we found out, I just dropped it, stopped. So I got morning sickness about at that six week mark, but I don't know if it was morning sickness or withdrawing from nicotine. So I can't say either way, maybe it was a little bit of both. I used to have my breakfast and then a little bowl of frozen raspberries to suck on. And that would be the only thing that got me through feeling nauseous. Then my doctor gave me like the little tiny nausea tablets which definitely helped when it was worse because I think sometimes 
I wasn't like not hungry, but I wasn't hungry. But then there was this like level of nausea that made it really hard for me to eat. So like I never, never threw up, never like nauseous to that point. But just that like uncomfortable kind of nausea, the little tablets definitely helped. The first symptoms. So like I said, like super tired, was sleeping from anywhere between like 12 to 14 hours a night and was almost still tired. I was so emotional. It was like pre-period times 10. That's what made us or made me want to test and if I'm looking down it's because I've got my little notepad after we knew the nausea started but also my boobs my boobs grew so much <laughs> like I have fake boobs and well as you know the videos on my channel but they just grew and my nipples I remember Sarah's day when she was pregnant and like just had her boys she said her nipples were like raspberries and I was like, oh, really? I get it. I get it now. Because mine have been. <laughs> and really sensitive. Like, really, really sensitive. That was all the way through. That's been from, like, very first symptoms all the way through to now. And they've almost just gotten more tender. Oh, also in the first trimester too. Because I was definitely a, like, go to gym at least four days a week kind of person. And I started to really struggle. I don't know if it was just me or whether it was worrying about hurting the baby with particular exercises i really started to struggle with going to the gym to the point where like i just got frustrated and almost stopped going because i was just struggling so much to do what i was so used to doing for years in the gym with this new like feeling it's almost like you could feel this little little bubble and when i would like contract my core muscles i could feel it around him it took me a little while to figure out basically a new gym routine it, it does become easier and i feel like once they kind of move out of your pelvis it makes it a little bit easier if that makes any sense if you continue to go to gym and just don't be afraid to try new things or take it right back to basics like right right back to basics and i found that's what's worked the best for me and being the most comfortable throughout first movements so i felt oh he's rolling around in there um i felt first movements at about 15 weeks i think it was the day or the week of like my 15 week mark i felt this tiny tiny like i don't know oh, it's so hard to explain this tiny tiny little movement and i thought hang on a minute that's not my stomach. That's that's my little person moving in there. <laughs> yeah, that was really special to feel, but my partner wasn't able to feel him moving probably for another, or at least two or three weeks before he could feel it. Same with seeing it. I could, I could like just, just see it on the outside, like visibly with, at, at about 16 weeks. But I don't know if it's because my partner has working hands too. His hands aren't like super sensitive. I could feel it, but he couldn't. But I don't know if it's just because... And because he goes to the gym as well. His palms were quite callous. So he wasn't... His hands weren't as sensitive. So I think that's probably a contributing factor to why he didn't feel it until a bit later. And even at that point, I, I thought I had a belly. And I look back now on photos and think, what belly? Because I came from being like a size 6 to a size 8. I felt bigger than I looked, but it was because around that 13 week mark, I was so bloated, like so bloated, just so uncomfortable. My belly felt so much bigger than it actually was. My baby bump kind of hadn't started really showing. I thought I had, but I think it was actually just the bloating. I became a real like cordial drinker, like the sugar-free cordial drinker and a gum chewer that's when my bloating flared up. So once I cut out the artificial sugar, that really helped with my bloating as well. Cravings is another big question I often get asked. I didn't really have that many cravings. I still don't. Um, yeah, I just, all the way through, I just wanted cold sweet. Yeah, like either yogurt, cereal and cold milk, fresh fruit, fresh fruit's been all the way through, I've craved fruit. Oh, and sour lollies. Yeah, I loved sour lollies. Any like, and sweet sour, that was, I was all over it. And ki kiwi fruit, actually. I was not a big kiwi fruit eater. Probably around 
I want to say that, oh, 18, 20 week, I spotted kiwi fruits in the supermarket and just started salivating. And that now has moved to peaches. So yeah, just fruit all the way through for me. I touched on, a, on it a little bit at the start, but mental health. Mental health is like a big one I've got written down. Probably towards the second trimester, the start of the second trimester, my mental health really started to deteriorate. I don't know if it was a few contributing factors. Obviously your hormones are going through major swings. I know for me, someone who's come from a background of eating disorder and I have BPD, really bad anxiety sometimes, but I have come from a history of depression. My mental health was struggling and I know the people around me too were struggling with how to help me. And sometimes I didn't even know how to help myself. But I think, like I said at the beginning, I think a big part of it was because I'd had so much change in my life in a relatively small amount of time. Like in six months, my life was upside down. I had a different living situation and had moved twice already. I had a different job, a different financial bracket if you will my body was changing on a constant basis my hormones were changing i was stressing about time about oh my god what are we going to get what do we need and i know i was very panicked from a fairly early stage of oh my god we need to get everything now and my partner was he's super logical and down to earth and i am panicked and up in the air sometimes and he kept saying to me why are you so stressed and when I'm in that panic state, it's hard for me to think, why am I stressed? Because he is so logical, he, he just knew that everything was going to be okay. And I really had to take it back to my meditation, take it back to my journaling, take it back to, okay, like really take a breath. Because when I just let my hormones take over, I was a mess. And I feel like that's so not spoken about. Say now TikTok as well has kind of opened that door to this is what pregnancy is really like. You might cry some days, you might cry all day. It's normal to feel a little bit alone, but no one really tells you that. And I think that was something that was really hard for my partner as well too. When I said to him, like, I feel really alone because I know he felt, but I'm right here, which was really hard sometimes to process that well I'm actually not alone I have really good support people around me I have my mom my partner his family my friends and I just still felt really alone don't think that people don't want to help you or don't want to be there for you sometimes they just don't know how Another thing that I think contributed to my own personal mental health, I really struggled with my clothes and just my body changing. And I know it's going to change. I know that's going to happen. I know I'm going to get bigger. I know all those things, but it's still wrapping your mind around it, wrapping your head around. Every week that you wake up, you're going to be a little bit bigger. That pair of pants that you wore last week is not going to fit. That dress that you wore last week is now too short. And I think... In my mind, being a first time mom, obviously this is my first pregnancy. I thought that so many more of my clothes would fit me for so much longer and they just didn't. And that's okay, but it was just wrapping my head around that idea of, oh, okay, um, that, that thing's too small now or that doesn't fit now or that's too tight. And I know something I struggled with fairly early, especially because of the bloating. Even before I really had like a, a baby bump, I couldn't wear a lot of my pants because it was still quite cool at the start of my pregnancy. It wasn't winter, but it was cool enough to wear long pants. I would feel really, really sick if I wore something that was too tight around my belly. Like, even if it was an elastic waistband, like leggings, for example, if it was like a compression waistband and it was too tight, I would just feel so ill. So that was something I really struggled with. Almost like accepting what didn't fit me anymore as each went, week went by. And even though my partner would say, what are you talking about? You look great. I'm like, yeah, but I don't feel it. Because I, I found, I don't know about other people, but I found the, the period between not fitting into my old clothes anymore, but not looking pregnant, that was a really hard stage for me. I'll definitely film a video of what clothes got me through my pregnancy because I wish I had someone to kind of 
look to for advice for that stuff because you can look on Instagram like I said you can look on Instagram you can see the pretty outfits and the ooh and the ah and the expensive whatever but if you're not someone who wants to spend $100 a piece on maternity clothes and you're thinking okay but what's actually worth it because what can I wear from now all the way through what can I wear for the next three months and what's worth it at all because I know sometimes I really tried to cut corners around what to and what not to buy but even now I think oh god just wish I bought that pair of pants that dress those pair of shorts right at the beginning when I thought and mm, is maternity clothes worth it yeah some of them are if like especially dresses and this is just a glassons top which is nice and stretchy stretchy things are going to be your best friend but I know I now have two maternity dresses that I could have bought way earlier. I've worn already multiple times since buying them, I think like a month ago. And it was things like that that I thought, oh, I wish I bought that earlier and I wish I had, I wish I'd known that. So I definitely would be filming that, keep an eye out for that. The constant changing body image was, was really tough and you're allowed to struggle with that. I'm gonna sit here and say, you're allowed to struggle. You're allowed to feel a bit icky just buy it because you know what it's going to save you the heartache now and it's going to save you save you the heartache further down the line in your pregnancy when you want to sit there and sob and because nothing fits you or because you don't feel comfortable in your clothes anymore and that's at that same point in my mental health and in my clothes it was like who am I anymore what's going to fit me from now on you don't have to just wear the baggy shorts and the baggy t-shirt buy things that make you feel nice because amongst all of your hormones and everything changing and all the clothes not fitting and just your life changing make sure you look after yourself and your mental health like fill your cup when people say fill your cup i mean fill your cup and it for you it might be going to get your hair done it might be going to get your eyebrows done it might be buying that new dress that you can then wear for the rest of your pregnancy go and do it because it's going to make you feel so much better and save for me anyway <laughs> a lot of heartache and tears when I should have just allowed myself those things instead of stressing about oh my god can I afford it and what am I going to do when I stop working that's so much further down the line obviously live within your means be smart about things but for me I panicked about now way back then way back when I was like 25 weeks now in my third trimester I've gotten more used to the, oh, well, that thing doesn't fit me anymore, but it's because I found what works for me. There is such a big market for secondhand maternity clothes. Like, if you buy something, don't love it. Wear it for, wear it for two months, doesn't fit you anymore. You don't want to keep it. Someone else is going to buy it. Someone else is going to want it because the baby and maternity industry is so expensive. And I know there's a lot of mums trying to do it on more of a budget because life's expensive now <laughs> like life is expensive and to have nice things you're shelling out a lot of cash and I, I get it I get it and I know I've personally bought things secondhand and they've been great they've been fine so like I said in the baby clothes video don't forget to look on Facebook marketplace there's some really really good stuff my mental health is definitely on and up I want to say at this stage because I've gotten through a lot of the why is everything so hard? Why am I so sad? Because I did go through a stage where I did feel really sad and I was really worried about my mental health. And I think now that I've done the antenatal class, I've done most of his room, I've adjusted to this, this new body. I've started to wrap my head around this new life. And one thing I, I haven't said, but one thing people don't talk about enough is the grieving of your old life. You will go through stages of oh, I kind of miss that part of my old life and you're allowed to miss it they're like that's okay you're essentially grieving a past version of yourself and that's gonna happen it'll happen even after you have your baby and it's normal this is a new life it's 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 huge it's a, it's a whole new chapter you're gonna have this little little person in your life for the rest of your life I don't want people to discredit or disregard that doesn't mean I'm not grateful for my new life. That doesn't mean I'm not grateful for this little person. Even when I'm uncomfortable, it doesn't mean I'm not grateful for feeling them kick me in the ribs every day. 
you're allowed to miss it and also not want it back, which I've learned. So I feel like now because I've been to all of those waves, and I know there'll be more waves, but my mental health is definitely on and up at this stage in my pregnancy. And I think, like I said, it's because we have ticked off a lot more stuff. I definitely hit a panicky stage, but after the antenatal class, which I think is something that it should be shared more. They talk a lot about labor and I was terrified of labor, like terrified of labor. And I thought, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? She said a lot of things, the nurse, the midwife, they who ran the antenatal class, take it back to your primal brain, if that makes sense. Like if, cause your oxytocin is, plays a massive part in your labor. So obviously your cortisol lowers your oxytocin naturally. So if you take it right back to your primal brain, if you're panicked, anxious, stressed, that's your cortisol. Your cortisol will tell your primal brain, something's trying to eat me, I can't have a baby right now. So your labor will be longer. So if you move away from that feeling into the oxytocin, do things that make you feel good, eat good food, sleep, watch your favorite TV show, hang around people that you love, do things, do things that make you feel good, whatever that is for you, it will actually make your labor so much easier and faster. And don't think when a contraction comes, oh my God, there's another one coming. Think, okay, let's go, bring it on. And that helped me a lot with preparing my head for labor, being in the right mindset, wrapping your mind around what it's really like, not what you mentally anticipate it to be, which is terrifying <laughs> for me anyway. Another thing in my third trimester that I know they say that you're very warm because you're literally like incubating a little human, but I'm sweaty all the time. Like I'm even like sweating now and sometimes I'll get so sweaty that I'll literally have like wet hands and feet. That sounds so gross, but my hands and feet will literally be wet from how sweaty I am. And the creases of your legs, it sounds so gross, but I get so sweaty. My partner runs warm. He's often a very warm person and I am like, a heater next to him. That for me has kind of been the main points through pregnancy of more so. I know I said a lot of like what I struggled with, but obviously you get all the beautiful things. Like you feel the kicks, you feel the movements. You get to see this belly grow. You get to buy all the beautiful things. You get to buy all the cute stuff and the furniture and do the room and all that stuff. But no one really talks about the harder parts of things and their journeys through their pregnancy. I'm glad we're in a time now where this kind of stuff is being spoken about a lot more openly because I feel like it needs to. Talk to people, just talk to people. Don't be, don't be afraid, which I learned after talking to my friends and my mom and stuff. Don't be afraid to talk to other women. Talk to other people about how you're feeling. Be open with your partner as well. Don't close the door on them, don't think that you can't talk to them about it. And if you need help, there are services that can help you. Talk to your GP, talk to your midwife, be honest with them. Don't say, yeah, I'm fine. If you're not fine, tell them you're not fine. It's okay to not be fine. Oh, I guess I should add in my belly too, hey? <laughs> my big boy and my little belly button is completely flat now. Sorry if this has been a little bit of a like struggles of pregnancy kind of video, but this has just been my journey through it. I just wanted to be really open because I know, like I said, I wish it was more spoken about on the internet. But yeah, if you have any more questions about my pregnancy and how I've been, feel free to drop them below. But I hope you have enjoyed. Bye.